All right, everyone. Today is the day we start doing performance modifications on the S650. <laughs> Says the guy who just did a draggy run with me with his tuned big fuel pump Elantra in on the side of me and got drug. Now, to be fair, I spun like the first five feet and it was like bumper to bumper for like maybe 40, 50 feet and then just freight train and as then I you also away. can't forget that i too was spinning like a madman until third you hear this right we're just gonna we're gonna leave the uh, you're gonna see the video but the multiple bus lines <laughs> i could put between those two cars let's just include all videos then if we're doing that <laughs> oh yeah he's gonna make fun of the one run where i didn't get a good downshift on the car which by the way i'm still learning uh not as easy as it might would seem to figure that out but anyways Car's broken in. I'm gonna give you the draggy footage in just a second, but let's get that intro. Dang it. All right, go ahead. tools in the garbage can this should be pretty easy i've seen photos hadn't really seen videos there may be videos who knows we're gonna pop the air cleaner covers off there's one. Oh, interesting uh tidbit here ford high hit a whole bunch of cool things around the car this is the original v8 logo they made for the ford and mercury vehicles back in the day and they've got it hidden inside the uh, covers just these two clips the covers are going to pop off. This one doesn't have it. Well, look at that. Oh, made in the USA. Look at and that. It's got all the indications for the Mustang, huh? The 460. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Can you see it? Barely. It's all the... Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. It's got uh, all of the different uh, cubic inch sizes for the Mustang. Oh, that's cool as heck. Now we'll look at the other one again. Oh, that's it. It's just the V8 logo. Well, that's cool. Now you see Ford putting all kinds of fun Easter eggs everywhere. Anyway, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pull these completely off so that we can work with them in the air conditioning on the bench. <laughs> like people who have a bench and air conditioning. So let me push this side of the clip up and then you're going to push this side of the clip out, kind of holding the back side with your finger. And then you're going to pull this all the way forward and that's going to slip off, right? So it was push up on one side, grab the back of the clip, push down on the other side and then pull it off. And you can just to make sure this doesn't try to disappear. You can push that back in a bit. This one is way easier. If you stared at it for 10 minutes, you probably wouldn't immediately figure it out. But there's a little tab of plastic down here that I'm kind of pushing on you and you can't really see it, but yeah, I can't really get to it. If I pull my finger back on this and it just kind of flexes the plastic out, this just pops right off. But you see right here, this is all I'm doing is pulling that back and it pops right off. I can already tell you this thing needs a catch can because it's got some high quality 5W30 going into that intake. Nice. Uh, next thing we're going to do is pop this connector off of here. Uh, might be easier said than done from where I'm looking at it. We're going to flip it over to do that. But anyways, we need to pop the MAF sensor connectors off. Let's do this one where it's easier to see. You can pull the lock back and then slide that sucker off. Same thing over here. Pull the lock back and then slide that sucker off. Alright, so let's see, what is this, a 10 mil? Got a 10 mil clamping this housing right here, the MAF housing. I could have got the buzz tools out, but uh, it's been a while since I've worked on a Ford, and I don't know how strong these plastics or bolts are just yet, so uh, let's just say I don't want to mess around and find out. You don't want to find Mexico's finest quality plastic? 
wherever that plastic was made. I just, I don't want to know yet. I've got a feeling I'll, I'll eventually figure out, but today is not the day. So that should be loose. Yes, it is. Now we can get both of the cones to pop up out of their house. And changing the air filters on this thing must be a procedure. Because I don't see you really doing this very easily without doing what I just did. I'm going to loosen up the hose clamps. Shouldn't have to go very far here. Ideal hose clamps. It's like the same brain you go to the hardware store and grab. I don't think I've ever seen a car have ideal hose clamps. <clears throat> All right, this should pop off. It does. We're gonna do some vertical intakes over here on the intake. And it's plastic. And if you see that my car is filthy, oh wow, sucking in some road dirt already. Nice. If you see that my car is filthy, it's because it is. It's, it's not a joke. Uh, it needs to be cleaned. That is much smaller. Filthy. I, uh, I really wanted to... Uh, oh, wow, it suck. I really yep. wanted to get some... Uh, get the miles in, get footage, do all of the silly stuff, put the exhaust on, all of that before giving it a really good detail because I just knew we were going to make a mess on this car. So... Now that we're drawing near the end of that, uh, it's going to get some serious love. In fact, I've got a uh, graphene coating from Af um, Adam's Polish I'm going to put on the car. We'll have a video of that. Um, but this is all real time. I could be cutting video here, but I want you all to see that this is a relatively easy thing to do. I'm going to pop that off. I'm going to flip it over so I can see this guy. And it's one of those. One of those. We're going to put some 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 uh, bunny ears up here. The ones that aren't really meant to be reusable. Frickin' Ford. Why? <sighs> that sucks. All right. I'm going to go grab the tool that I'm supposed to use to pull that off, and I'll be right back. All right. So I got this sucker off, and... Here's the infamous carbon traps. Now, the special tool that I needed was the perfect size socket. This is a six millimeter. And let me show you how we're gonna do this. Did I loosen this one already? I did. Okay. I'm gonna flip this over. And the way you're gonna get this off without destroying them, because they're really meant to be one-time use only, is you push this all the way in so that it's fully, uh, fully seated. Push your socket down over those fingers and then slide the connector out. Carefuling. Carefuling. Carefuling? You mean carefully? I'm carefuling. It's a thing. Any, any one of my viewers who watches Ave on YouTube knows why I'm saying that. Okay. Well, the trick usually works pretty well takes a little bit of effort. Anyone who's ever dealt with these stupid connectors knows this. They suck. There it is. But anyways, perfect size socket. You can pull that off. And there is the other carbon trap. So let's do like I said, and we are going to go in the shop and do this in the air conditioning where it's not 80 something degrees. All right. So this sensor right here that's on your intake tubes is the mass airflow sensor. Now, the new Mustang is a hybrid speed density and math sensor car. But even then, if you hurt this math sensor, the car will not do car things, okay? It will get very angry. People have tried unplugging them to see what happens. So to ensure we don't harm that math sensor, we are going to remove it and put it aside while we reach in here and cut the plastic out that is holding the carbon trap in there. Uh, we're not gonna remove this. Do not remove this because these air vanes steady the air across the mass airflow sensor. And I don't mean to sound paranoid, but math sensors are expensive. So trust you me, while you're taking these things out, be very gentle. 
be very careful. And as soon as I back these screws out, these are just plain old galvanized screws going into plastic. You don't want to over tighten them. You don't want to put a, uh, a buzzer tool and rip these suckers out of here. They were, what is this, a T20? And then you see the airflow indicator so that you don't mess this up. This is the intake of the car. This is the filter. So the airflow always points that way. I'm going to slide this out of here nice and easy. And you can see the mass airflow sensor. And that cute little sucker hanging out right there is super sensitive to being disturbed. So we're going to take this and we're going to very gently set that off to the side. Bang. And leave it alone. All right. So... I've got a pair of side cutters here and I'm going to reach in here and cut or nick these the best that I can. It's really difficult to reach around this sucker to work in there and it doesn't need to be pretty. You're literally adding five wheel horsepower by removing this. If you leave it a little nubbin of plastic behind right here, it's going to be okay. And then I've got my long needle nose. I'm going to reach in here and break them off if they hadn't come off already and then slip this out. Jacob's going to come back after I massacre these bits of plastic and show me fishing that carbon trap out. All right, so let's fish this out of here. I've got a lot of experience working in large holes. Um, so once that's out of there, note to self, the side cutter is really not necessary. That plastic seems very intentionally brittle. So if you just grab it with a long pair of needle nose and twist, it breaks off. It's almost like Ford knew people would probably do this. So there you go. Now, I don't know the most ceremonious way to get this out of here, but I know what's about to happen. I'm going to grab onto this thing. completely unbundle it inside of here apparently. I need to get to the loose end of it. And then I'm going to pull it out. There, there's a carbon trap delete. Yeet. Okay. Next, if we look down further in there, there's another one of those three-legged suckers that's holding this in. So I think Jake can probably get me on video showing you how easy it is to actually snap these off. Boop. Boop. And... Boop. Get all the plastic out of there. So Jacob said off camera, it seems like Ford made it really easy to take this out. And I told him, oh yeah, <laughs> Ford knows the people that they're building this car for. And if by making it difficult to remove the carbon traps would help, they would do it. But they know darn well that you could have encapsulated this in solid plastic and tried to keep that carbon trap in there as best you could. And we would have taken saws to that sucker, cut it up, <laughs> and glued it back together to get that restriction out of here. So... You don't need to watch me do the other one. I'm going to do the other one off camera real quick. And of course, the installation of the math is in, math is in reverse. Um, so let me do the other one and I'm going to bring you back and we'll put a math back in. Do you like my twins? No. <laughs> one is way cooler than the other. Uh, this guy, you know, you can see like daylight and things and this one, you know, Looks like you're trying to breathe through a straw. Wah, wah, wah. So let's, let's America this real quick. All right, so carbon trap is out of this one. Remember the arrow I told you? The side with the bend is the intake manifold. The air is flowing this way. So this mass airflow sensor, that arrow needs to point that way. Gonna gently slip that in. And look, I'm sure this mass airflow sensor is tougher than I make it out to be. But my experience and probably many other mechanics experience is it doesn't take much to upset a math sensor and it's not working right anymore. Jacob, you worked at parts stores. How many math sensors have you sold in your life? Hundreds. All right. Hundreds, hundreds of hundreds. 
You don't want to give a math sensor a reason to be upset. So we won't. We're going to be nice and gentle on it. Remember, this is plastic. Doesn't need to be tight. We're in there. So now, my twins can breathe. They're ready to go put them back on and do another draggy run? I know you are. All right, so just to make it easier on you remembering which side is which, the, uh, the one with the large nipple on it right here goes to the larger hose, which is somewhere. Here it is. That way you know which side is which and you're not confusing yourself. One of the things I'm going to do, though, look at these awesome air filters from Ford. Fomoco on the back of it, made Fomoco. in Mexico, only the finest quality. Um, I'm going to go ahead and slip this on before we stick this in the hole. Just because I know this is going to be a pain in the butt once it's in there. And it's even got like a little register here, a nipple that hangs off of it that lines up in the air box right here. So if you're fighting it, you need to look out for that. So I'm going to start up here. I'm going to make sure nothing's in the throttle body. Looks good. I'm going to start up here. I'm going to start it on, twist it a little bit, and then force it down into the box. And just like that, it's locked in. Okay, uh, let's grab the other one. This guy, everything looks okay. Small nipple, small hose. Same story, we got that little peg down there that needs to line up. So I'm going to make sure that's pointed in the downward direction. Make sure nothing got in our throttle body while it was sitting right there. Nice and clean. Disgusting. You're just jealous that that one throttle body is, is big or bigger than your cars and it's got a pair of them. Well, at least I already have forced induction, so. Uh -huh. That's a lot of trash talking for the guy that knows exactly what would happen once this car has forced induction. Okay, well, let's, let's, let's go around some corners there, sir. See how you like that one. <clears throat> uh, the performance pack and Dark Horse has entered the chat. Any other smart comments you've got? Well, unfortunately, judging by these wheels right here which indicates you do not have either so uh -huh. it's okay i was uh concerned with going very fast in a straight line got some camaro-esque wheels down here yeah how do you like those uh camaro v6 wheels classy they're classic but let's let, let's back up and take a look at these brakes because lord have mercy <laughs> they're giant. and let's get a little bit of the brimbo action we have right there so yeah, the base models, and this that's what this is, now come with uh, the big Brembo's up front that used to belong to the performance pack of the previous generation, except the rotors are bigger, and the rotors are symmetrical front to back with some big old two-piston calipers in the back that look like they came off the front of the S197. So even though the base model has giant, giant brakes, uh, and they're heavy. So the guys online are saying that the... Uh, the brakes, the, the rotors in the back, are 45 pounds a piece. Jeez. So there's a lot of weight to be saved there. All right, so let's get back to this. Um, one of the things we're going to do is fish our math sensor cable back up here. I'm going to push that back in here. Make sure the safety clip is backed out. It does appear to be. Slip that in. Lock it down. That's one. The other one, I'm going to... Push my connector in right here, the uh, little tab that holds it, the wire retainer. Make sure the locking tab is all the way out. Push the connector in, lock it. And then this hose, line it up, click. Line it up, back this up so it can move forward, all the way down, push it back in. Click. Um, tighten the air filters. What size was that? It's that size, whatever size that is. That is an eight millimeter. Make sure our air filters are straight and lined back up again. And I'm considering maybe doing the aftermarket air filters like the ones Whipple has. Uh, Kelly Aiken, uh, he put the Whipples on his and the car developed a really nice uh, like a, almost a whisper, uh, whisper or uh, 
whistling sound whenever it was up on throttle. And though it made basically no difference in performance, and why would it? The car has got so much intake. Uh, it sounds pretty cool. So we'll see. We shall see. If you hear a uh, copious amounts of farting in the background, it's not Jacob's car. It's someone with a uh, four-stroke dirt bike having a ball across the road. And then obviously, lastly, we're gonna tighten up the hose clamps here on the throttle bodies. All right, last thing to do, put these suckers back in. Line it up in the back, push it in, wiggle it down, click, click. Push that in, wiggle it down, click, click. And there is a free five wheel horsepower, something like 15 wheel, uh, crank horsepower upgrade on your 2024 Mustang GT. So like the good scientists we are, we're gonna go back to Mexico. It's gonna take a while, might be a little dark. And we're gonna make a pass with the draggy and see if that performance increase is evident. Be right back. So you'll see there that the car lost a little mile an hour and it slowed down two hundredths in the quarter mile, a little slower in the uh, 60 to 130. It's getting hotter outside South Louisiana. There's not much I can do about that. The DA has gotten worse. So considering the conditions have gotten worse and the car roundabout ran the same time, um, that that's more or less an improvement. I wasn't expecting to see a huge gain in the numbers especially not with it so being so easy for the da to change a good bit um there is an audibly different sound to the intakes um whistling um and i think it's because the carbon traps act like, kind of like a silencer and um the second throttle body only comes on in certain conditions like wide open throttle so i think when you've got some medium load under it, it the air is kind of trying to whistle past it um so yeah it seat of pants feel the car sounds a little different it wants it feels more rev happy doesn't feel faster but um it likes it and it sounds better so whatever uh, carbon traps, garbage anyways, that needed to go away. Um, yeah, so I'd love to get you more and better draggy runs, but we're going to need it to for the temperature to cool down a good bit outside and get more consistent. Um, you'll notice on this pass, the car 60 footed better, which is good because that 60 foot may be a little faster um, with that mile an hour we ran on the first run should put this car in the low 12s uh, where it should be. So we'll see. Regardless, I need to wrap this video up because the very next thing I'm going to do is the exhaust and that'll be posted after this video. And one of the things I'm gonna do out of curiosity, I have not reset the computer on the car. I'm gonna do the draggy runs for the exhaust without resetting the computer. And then once after that, I'm going to reset the computer and then try again. Regardless, thanks for coming along and watching how to remove your carbon traps. Do it. It's worth it. It sounds better. It's, it just makes sense, right? The car is going to make more power. People have done it on the dyno. Anyways, we love you. God bless. Peace.